Good morning to everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you to our Harvest Thanksgiving service this morning. And first of all, let me say a very warm welcome to uh, an old friend of yours, two old friends of yours, um, emphasis on the friends rather than the old, uh, Brian and Rosemary Fletcher. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Brian as our preacher this morning, and delighted that Rosemary's also been able to come and keep Brian right. Uh, so we're delighted to see you both. And uh, any other uh, visitors are also uh, very welcome. Uh, this evening we will continue our harvest celebrations at 6 o'clock, and um, I will preach this evening. And we will also welcome our friends from the Cunningham. And then subsequently next Sunday evening we won't have an evening service here, but we will join them for their harvest just a couple of things to pick out from uh, the bulletin um, for emphasis. First of all, uh, if you're a class leader, um, uh, Marbeth has arranged little cards and a small little gift of fruit for some of our folks who are shut in uh, or folks who have been recently bereaved and so on. And uh, they're all uh, in little white bags um, in the kitchen. So if you're a class leader, um, uh, Marbeth may already have had a word in your ear, uh, but it would be helpful if this morning or this evening uh, you picked those up uh, to distribute um, during the week. And thanks to Marbeth for the work in that. Uh, thanks also to Rebecca and to the choir for what they will um, add to our worship uh, over this uh, weekend and tomorrow. And thanks also to the team who have decorated the church uh, so um, tastefully and sensitively and gives glory to God, the Lord of creation and the provider of all that we need. Uh, just one little additional announcement that I was handed uh, from our friends at the Elam Church. Uh, they are having an evening of praise and testimony on Friday the 14th, that's Friday week at 8 o'clock, and is being led by the Hope and Glory Estenwani Choir from Swaziland. So I don't know, some of you probably know about African choirs. Um, You've got to bring your dancing shoes when you go. The fact that it's the Elam, I don't know whether that adds anything to it or not, but uh, um, I, I, I'm hoping to go myself, actually. Uh, so just to uh, announce that on their behalf and encourage you to, to, to go uh, if you can. And then just the, the last little um, thing is that I mentioned last week uh, that uh, Christian Aid in conjunction, or maybe I should say the Irish Methodist World Development Relief uh, Fund together with Christian Aid have um, been um, organizing a petition uh, to urge for funds to um, help situation in the world uh, damaged by um, um, the climate and the weather, and Pakistan is obviously an example um, that's um, been in the news uh, recently. I know that people coming in that door, um, Hazel ambushed you and, and got you to sign up, because I, I think when I looked at the last time of the list, Hazel and I were the only two who had signed it, so uh, maybe I hadn't kind of given enough. There's also a copy of the, the same thing on this, this door, so uh, there, wasn't, um, there wasn't somebody to, to, to sort of twist your arm. But if you would like to sign that, uh, today or tomorrow evening uh, will be the last chance, and then I'll send them off. Now, I think those are all the things we need to um, announce. The choir are going to lead us as we come to worship on this Harvest Sunday as they sing, uh, Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God.
life into my willing soul. Bring the presence of the risen Lord to renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come alive. For your purity, Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. God, the Lord, created the heavens and stretched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are gathered here this morning to worship you on this Harvest Sunday, to give to you our thanks and praise for all your faithfulness to us in this year since last we gathered for Harvest. We thank you, Lord, that you have given to us all that we have needed for life, we thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. We thank you, Lord, for all the delicious luxuries on top of the basics to sustain us in life. 
We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of beauty and color and taste and smell. We thank you for all the senses that you've given to us and the things that uh, make those senses um, come alive. And on this harvest morning, we look around the church and we see the beauty of the flowers. Uh, we see uh, the fruit and um, we're not allowed to eat them during the service, but Lord, we thank you that they are for us a reminder of all that you have given to us to enjoy. And also, Lord, as we look around, we see each other, and we thank you that you have given to us family and friends and neighbors, and we thank you for this church community, and we pray, O oh God, that you will make us a blessing to one another. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to produce in us that fruit of the Holy Spirit that we have been thinking about these last weeks. Lord, will you produce in us a harvest of righteousness that will be for your glory, for our blessing, and for a witness to the world. Lord, forgive us for our sins, for our wrong thoughts, words, and actions for our failure at times to do the good that we could have done. Cleanse us and forgive us, and fill us all afresh now with your Holy Spirit, that he may inhabit our praise, and that he may bless us, and that he may bring glory to the Son and to the Father. And we ask our prayer in Jesus' name. As we pray together the prayer he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll all sing together our next hymn, Jesus is Lord. Now, boys and girls, do you want to come up to the front, and I'm going to talk to you just for a quick minute, and then we're going to do something else and send you out then to Children's Church. So any little ones, come on up to the front. Now, I remember last week I had a Bible verse that you were going to learn, 
And I've had one person who's already come to me and told it to me. And uh, next Sunday, I'm going to have a little prize, a uh, little something for everybody else who can say it. So you've got another week to learn it. Well, there's room for you here. Can you remember what the verse was? With John chapter 14, verse 6. That's right. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. All right, you've got one more week. Um, squeeze in there. Go in the next row there. Now, there you go. Now, I don't have a children's talk. Uh, Mr. Fletcher had one up his sleeve, but I said, I hadn't, I'd forgotten whether I'd asked him or not. And he said, no, you go and do, do, you do yours, he said. But then I didn't have one. But I do have a song. And Rebecca chose the hymns for today. Give me, the, give me that song. We're going to sing it in, in a moment, but I, I'm going to tell you something about it first before we sing it. Can we have the... Uh, uh, right? He made the stars to shine. Do you know this song, do you? Yeah? Twinkle, twinkle, he made the stars to shine. He made the rolling sea, splash, splash, right? He made the mountains high next bit, and he made me, okay? So on Harvest Sunday, uh, we think about all the things that God has made. Isn't this beautiful? Look at, look at this. Look at these. Hey, all those colors and, and different textures and, and these things that are not allowed to eat during church. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. Lovely. God made all of those things. And that's why I think Rebecca chose that song for children's talk. God made everything. And on Harvest Sunday, we thank God for it. Now, here's a little thing. I hope you remember this. Give us the next... Well, hold on. Don't put the words up just yet. You know this song, do you? What's the next word in the song? He made the stars shine. He made the ruins. He made the mountains high. And he made me. What's the next word? Do you know the song? Give us, give us the next word. I'll show us something. And this is why I love him. Now... We're going to change this, okay? Now, I've been here two years. I don't know whether we've sung the song in church before or not. But whoever controls the, um, the typing on the thing is going to change it before the next time we sing it, okay? Because I don't like the next word. What's the next word? And. And. Now, do you know what a conjunction is? You don't. <laughs> don't worry. We're not going to have an English lesson this morning. Fear not. A conjunction is a word that joins things, but you get different kinds of conjunctions, right? And is when you have one thing that's like that, and one thing like that, and, and they're kind of the same, right? Now, I'm going to change that little word, and, to the word, but. Now, what's the difference between and and but? Right? They're both conjunctions, joined two bits of a sense together. But if you put the word but in, it means there's something different coming, right? Um, this is a wonderful choir who sing in tune, but here's a minister who can't sing a note, right? Well, I can sing a few notes, but not as good as them. So you wouldn't say they're great singers and he's a singer. You, you, if you say the word but, it means something different in what's coming. Now, right, you got that? Now, now, look at the rest of it. But this is why I love him. For me he bled and died. The Lord of all creation became the crucified. Right? Do you love God because he made grapes and flowers? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. But is that the biggest thing that God has done for you? No. no. What is the biggest thing God has done for you? What is the best thing of all that God's ever done for you? He sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, for our sins. That is the biggest thing. So, yes, we sing, he made the stars shine, and the sea, and the flowers, and the grapes. Oh, that's great. Well, we should say thank you for that. But, oh, I woke up somebody sleeping. But, there's something bigger than that. And it's that Jesus died for us. So we're going to sing that. Uh, oh, look, it's changed already. Look at that. See the guy, the, the, this team are ace. Look at that. It's changed already on the screen, right? So we're going to sing, He Made the Stars. And you're going to do the actions as well. You, you can keep your seats, uh, but if you want, well, you can start if you want. You're going to do the actions, yeah? We're going to sing. Ready?
good. That was good singing. Good having the choir singing behind us as well, isn't that? Yeah. Okay, we'll let you off go to um, Children's Church and uh, Shelly and... Uh, Now, in our prayers for others today, let's pray for those who are in dire need in various parts of the world, and then to pray for God's blessing upon our harvest season, both the physical harvest for farmers and hardworking fishermen and people in the food industry and so on, but also for a spiritual harvest, a harvest of souls for the kingdom and a harvest of righteousness in our own lives. Our Heavenly Father, we come as we pray for others. We pray for ourselves as well asking that you will do uh, works of grace uh, in us. We thank you, Lord, for the harvest, for the hardworking farmers and fishermen and all the people who work in the food industry. And we, we go to the shops and we just um, assume that there'll be stuff there for us to buy, uh, take home and cook and eat. And we thank you, Lord, for all of the work that goes behind that. And we thank you that you are the God who has put that principle of multiplication into nature, so that when uh, we sow one seed, uh, we can reap uh, 30, 40, 100 fold. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon all those who work to provide for us our daily bread. And we recognize, Lord, that in this time of economic crisis with rising uh, fuel costs and uh, inflation in other areas as well, uh, some of these uh, businesses are under strain and we recognize too, Lord, that there are some people uh, who are uh, under financial strain and will struggle to provide both heat and food in their homes in this winter if the weather is very cold. And so we pray, Lord, that you will help us to be aware of the needs of others and to help to supply their needs if we can and to remember in prayer those who have heavy responsibilities uh, in um, government as they deal with some of these difficult issues. We pray to Lord for parts of the world that have faced disaster because of um, drought in East Africa in particular, uh, because of floods in Pakistan and in other places too. We ask, O oh God, that you will um, encourage those who are bringing relief and help. Uh, we pray that they will be able to, to, to do so uh, making a real difference in people's lives. And especially we pray for those who do this humanitarian work in the name of Jesus. But whatever their motive, Lord, we pray that nonetheless the God of heaven uh, would bless their endeavors. And then, Lord, we pray too for a spiritual harvest. We pray that here in this village that there will be many people who will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord and that they will repent and be saved and come into fellowship with you. And whether in this church or in other churches in this village, we don't really mind where it is, but we pray that many will turn to Christ. We pray too, Lord, for a, a, a spiritual harvest in our own lives, that there might be the fruit of righteousness seen in us, the fruit of the Spirit, that so our lives would be a better witness to the truth of the gospel, that we would let our light shine before people, that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. And so, in the name of Jesus, we pray these our prayers. Amen. And we'll sing together again uh, for the fruits of his creation.
Our Bible reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 6, reading from verse 19 to the end of chapter 6. And this, of course, is Jesus um, speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted, devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not, not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And may God bless his word to all our hearts. Now, the choir are going to sing for us again, and then after that, uh, Brian is going to come and bring God's word to us. The choir will sing, Show Us Christ.
Lovely. Thank you so much. Really good uh, expectations well fulfilled. That's a private text between Rebecca and myself. It's so good to be here this morning, a real joy. Uh, Rosemary and I are very pleased to be here. Uh, thank you, David, for inviting me to speak. I'd be quite happy to sit down there, and maybe you as a congregation after I finish might have been glad about that too. Um, you've got your chicken in, have you, and all the rest of it? Is it, is it sorted? Uh, it was a real joy for us to be in Kalibaki. I just want to say that uh, we really appreciate it. So, David, I know your uncle was here on his last station, and I'm assuming, unless you've multiplied age some way or another, uh, that this is your last station. And I know that he said it wouldn't have been a good idea for it to be his first station because it would have been very difficult to fill, finish after that. So it was the same for us, and we trust that you will be, and we know that you are being blessed as much as we are. It's extraordinary. It was 10 years ago next year. Uh, where does the time go? I'm 10 years older almost, but so are you. <laughs> Not making any further comment on that. It really is a joy to be here. Let's pause for a moment's prayer. Lord, you are the God who has spoken, and you still speak. And Lord, we so want to hear your voice. Each one of us, Lord, has different needs. Perhaps we didn't come here this morning expecting you to speak to us, but Lord, we trust you. Help us to sense your voice deep in our spirits and minister to our needs. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Therefore, do not worry. We were 39,000 feet in the air on our way back from Australia, visiting our son and his family. I looked out the aeroplane window and viewed the terrain underneath, for at that stage I could see it. The pilot told us it was Afghanistan and Iran, and of course we'd be moving to U Ukraine. A question uninvited and certainly unwanted, popped into my head. Would those nice, friendly guys underneath be tempted to fire one of their surface-to-air missiles at us? Uh, it was just at that time that the pro-Russian rebels down in Ukraine had downed an airplane. And I thought, hmm... Mind, if the catchy little song that was played on the sound system of the airplane just before we'd taken off had been remembered, I wouldn't have needed to dwell on that thought. You may know the song. It's three little birds. It goes like this. Rebecca, could you give me a note? <laughs> on second thoughts, I better not. It's don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing's going to be all right. Because every little thing is going to be all right. Rise up this morning, smile with the rising sun. Three little birds pitched up on my doorstep, singing sweet songs of melodies pure and true, saying, this is my message to you. Oh, it's a catchy little song. Singing, don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing it's going to be all right. I wonder had Bob Marley been influenced by the words of Jesus? Because, of course, Jesus talks about birds, doesn't he? Jesus gives several commands. I think there are about nine in this passage that David read. But the command, do not worry, 
is repeated three times. Verse 25, verse 31, and verse 34. You're familiar with it. In October 2022, that's not just possible, is it? The pound is falling. The cost of living is rising. The old stabilities like the monarchy and the union are being shaken. Political leadership doesn't seem to be very reassuring, to say the least. And then there's Mr. Putin. Not to mention your particular worries and mine. Do not worry. As they would say in Belfast, is he having a laugh? (laughs) How are we to understand that command for a command it is? I'm not going to go where David was with all of the grammar of it, but it is a command. Perhaps the most obvious and comforting thing to say is that at least Jesus recognizes that we get anxious. He would not have given that exhortation to his disciples if it hadn't been so. And secondly, his words are bang up to date as relevant as they were when when he first spoke them. I think in this passage, Jesus shows his disciples that anxiety just does not happen. It comes out of the decisions of people's hearts. Perhaps could you, you could describe it. The fundamental movements of the human heart are the cause of our anxieties. So he says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and wrath do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We all have treasures. We all seek to find some security in the uncertainties of the future. That in itself, there is nothing wrong with. The problem is, treasures on earth are a very unstable or unstable investment for the future. Because they can be undone, says Jesus. Rust, moths, thieves. Think of rust as time's corrosions. A little time ago, Rosemary was highly amused looking at some photographs that hadn't seen the light of day for a while. Well, you know the sort of thing. Needless to say, I was central to the cause of her mirth. I was reminded of Robin Mark's little song. You may know it, old photographs I'm looking at, scenes from our history. Who are those people? Where is that place? Is that really me? Well, I'm older but no wiser, says Mark. You've lost a little wit. Are those angelic faces, they who stare across my breakfast table? Old photographs, sweet memories, happy days gone by. I love them and I hate them. For the camera does not lie. No, the camera does not lie. (laughs) Healthy bodies are important. Beauty is to be acknowledged. Nothing wrong with that. But if that is our treasure... If that's our priority, then we're going to be anxious. Because as I hear from one of my early days in the Presbyterian little mission hall out where I was born, youth and beauty pass away, oh, you have not long to stay. Says Jesus, that's what happens. Moss, think of moss as nature's corrosions. Our son and his family live in Western Australia where they have a very beautiful home and a delightful setting. Yet like every other house owner, he has constant fight with nature to keep that beautiful home beautiful. And he has the added problem of a very serious danger of termites 
and fire. And so they have to take special measures to adjust all of that. Property and possessions are nice. But they're all subject to corrosion. And if they are our priorities, we will be anxious, says Jesus. Think of thieves as humanity's corrosions. The number of times I have read reports on someone in Northern Ireland being conned out of thousands of pounds is extraordinary. Time and nature and humanity have a way of creating worry in the lives, says Jesus. It's because the way of the heart works. The second reason that Jesus says, I believe, for a cause of anxiety is in that tricky little saying in verses 22 and 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? I want to interpret that metaphorically. Jesus is speaking of the eye as one's worldview. That's the thing through which we assess people and circumstances and the events in our lives. And says, Jesus, if that vision, if that view is clouded by wrong priorities and the rock of ages cannot be seen, then you're going to be anxious. The third thing he says is in verse 24. He says, the third reason Jesus gives why people may be anxious, he says, no one can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, says the NIV. Here, instead of the but and an, I want to say mammon. Because mammon is the word that really is saying it's an old word. It's, it, it means that it could be anything else. So you focus on money, you get beclouded a little bit. Mammon can be anything that takes the place of God. Anything. Anything that's more important than God. And the point is, we all serve some sort of God. Either the living God or some sort of mammon. There's no in between. All of us serve a God. It may even be ourselves, but we serve them. There's no sitting on the fence and there's no getting away from it. The thing is, if we do that, then that thing that we put our trust in, underneath, in our deep, in our souls, we will know that it will not hold us secure in the storms of life. When the things are thrown against us that sometimes we hadn't planned for. The prophet Isaiah pictured it well when he mocked the idols that the people were serving, the Jewish people. This is what he said. He said, the craftsman encourages the goldsmith. The one who smooths with a hammer encourages the one who strikes the anvil. Saying of the soldering, it is good. And they fasten it with nails so that it will not topple. Fastened with nails. That it will not topple. Jesus expressed a similar thought in a different way in the next chapter of Matthew. Two men built a house. One built, said Jesus, on the rock. The other built on the sand. And when the floods came, and all that was thrown against it, one house collapsed, the other one didn't. I pause. And I asked you this morning, on what are you building? On what have you built? Is it secure? Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. So I want to argue that Jesus does not simply say, stop worrying. 
He says, here's why you're worrying. He shows us the world as it is. And you and I both know that. That's the world in which we live. And then he shows us the same world, if you like, with him inside it. He is the one who's living. And he is saying, here is how to live. He says in 26, look at the birds. It's a command. They do not sow and they do not reap or store away in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Literally it is, start looking at the birds. The implication being something like this. Quit focusing on what makes you anxious and start looking at the birds. Your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father cares for them. Can he not be counted on to take care of you? If the Father loves the birds, do you think he loves you less? You're looking at the wrong direction. When I was a little boy in short trousers, I know that's difficult to imagine. I can remember that same little Presbyterian mission hall standing up and saying this little poem. Boys, oh dear, my heart was beating within the cage. I can still remember it. The robin said to the sparrow, Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know while these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father so it just cares for you and me. Start looking at the birds. And then he says in verse 28, see how the lilies of the field grow, literally. Start looking at the flowers and creation. The implication being something like this. Quit focusing on what makes you anxious and start looking at the flowers. Notice how exquisitely and extravagantly God clothes them. Do you not know this God? Do you not realize if this God cares for the transient flowers, he can be counted on to care for you? You're looking in the wrong direction. Start looking at the flowers. It's true, isn't it? We get anxious when we look in the wrong direction. Seven years ago, we left for Australia with the family to visit them again. And my father had gone to see him and uh, he prayed for us. I asked him to pray for us before we traveled. Within a few days, I got the news from our daughter that he was he had seriously ill and he died. We made our way back to Ireland and uh, we, were, we arrived back on the Thursday, long travel from Australia and the funeral service was on the Friday. I can remember one of my friends texting me and saying after the service, I'm sure that that service gave you great peace. And I was absolutely numb on the inside. And I can remember going into my study and praying and almost like a, a voice into the spirit came. You're looking in the wrong direction. You're looking inside. And this word came clearly into my soul. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stead on you because he trusts in you. Hear the words of Jesus. Your heavenly father my word, the hymn writer, William Clark Martin, put it lovely. I trust in God wherever I may be, upon the land or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father 
watches over me. I trust in God. He, I know he cares for me on mountain bleak or on the stormy sea. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. Of course, you've got to be able to say that he is your heavenly Father. You're looking in the wrong direction. Pause a moment. Better watch this clock. That's just to let you know and pretend it, you know. Pause a moment, and somebody may be saying, all this wonderful emphasis on God's care, does that mean I can sit back and do nothing because the Lord will provide? Well, the way God feeds the birds and clothes the plants tells us no. He made provision for the birds. He made provision in nature. He arranged the sustenance from the sun and the soil for the flowers and the plants. So too with human beings. God provides. But in normal circumstances, we have to cooperate. Doesn't that mean the hungry or the needy people will be no more in the world? Yes, that's true. But the most basic cause of hunger and need is not an adequate divine provision, but an equitable human distribution. The fact that God feeds and clothes his children does not exempt us from the responsibility of being agents through whom he does, does it. Jesus' parable of the sheep and goats searches me all the time. I find it particularly difficult when I go through Belfast and I find people waiting, begging, and so on. But we're called as I have been challenged to give. Does that mean, doesn't that mean the Christian will never experience trouble? Jesus commands us not to be anxious, but he does not promise a trouble-free life. God cares for the sparrows, but they do fall to the ground. The promise was that it would not happen without his knowledge. A Christian's freedom from anxiety is not because he or she is guaranteed immunity from trouble. Rather, it is because nothing, nothing is beyond the orbit of your heavenly Father's care. For Paul says in Romans, for in everything he works for good with those who love him are called according to his purpose. Now that is where trust Get scary. Remember the three Hebrew children? If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we'll still trust him. Remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, if it's your will. That's where trust gets scary. That's where what we sing or preach hits the rubber in the road. But God can be trusted. Lastly, Jesus said the third command in this one, dealing with him in it, he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Literally, it is keep on seeking. He doesn't just say stop worrying. He says keep on channeling that emotional energy that seeks all the other stuff which your heavenly Father knows you need anyway into seeking to live in the reign of God and the right relatedness, the gifts, of the fruit of the Spirit of which David has referred to already. And what the choir and the singing was about. If you want to be anxious about anything, says Jesus, if you like, be so for God's rule to come and for seeking to live in restored relationships. Your priority is God. Hallelujah. Nahum Tate and Nicholas Brady, the two Irish popes, wrote it well, didn't they? Fear him, ye saints, and you will then have nothing else to fear. Make you his service your delight. 
He'll make your wants his care. Earlier in that chapter, Jesus, in what we call the Lord's Prayer, had told his disciples to pray. Pray that the Father's kingdom will come. Pray the Father's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He told them to ask forgiveness for their own sons as well as forgiving those who had sinned against them. Restored relationships vertically, horizontally. In anybody's life seeking the kingdom, the first step is when he or she humbles themselves, repents, believes, submits to God, and is born again by God's Spirit through faith and the finished work of Calvary. I pause again and I ask you, is that true in your life? That's where you can say, I don't need to be anxious. Yes, I feel it, but I turn and I say, Lord, I'm seeking you with all of my heart. You are first in my life. And it continues until every department of our lives, home, marriage, family, personal morality, professional life, business ethics, bank balance, tax returns, lifestyle, is joyfully and freely submitted to Christ's Lordship. Says Jesus, if you're going to be anxious about anything, that's what you'd be anxious about. Bob Marley's song is a catchy little song with a lovely, reassuring sentiment. But it's like whistling in the dark. Jesus come, words come with the same power and authority today as when he first spoke them. Walk into them and know the freedom that he will bring. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. Do not worry. How glorious is that? Do not worry. For tomorrow will worry for itself. Seek first his kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your precious word. And when all the words of human beings have faded, and where sometimes they give wrong impressions, your word remains secure. And by your Spirit, Lord, this day, continue to speak it into our hearts and our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. We sing in closing, Lord for the years.
And now may the Lord of peace himself, wholeness and completeness, give you, each one of you, that peace, always, by all means, in his blessed and holy name. Amen.